Al Rogers' office called me uh, uh, this morning, wanted me to make this announcement uh, for Hal and for her since she wasn't going to be here. And uh, our leaders are beginning to recognize that due to the loss of coal jobs, uh, loss of jobs in the manufacturing sector, that we are struggling in most of Eastern Kentucky. <coughs> So they've developed this new uh, initiative, uh, joint initiative with Hal Rogers and uh, with the support of Hal Rogers and uh, Governor Bashir called SOAR, S-O-A-R. And that is uh, shaping our Appalachia region. And I'm going to read this for you and then I'll send it out on uh, to our uh, chamber members who are here as well. In an effort to focus on the future success of Southern and Eastern Kentucky, Governor Steve Brashear and Congressman Hal Rogers will be hosting a summit with hundreds of citizens from across the region to share new ideas and recommendations about how to move Kentucky's Appalachian region forward. Uh, the summit titled SOAR, Shaping Our Appalachian Region, uh, will be held on Monday, December 9th at the Eastern Kentucky Exposition Center in Pikeville, that's at 126 Main Street, Pikeville, Kentucky, it's right across from the city park. And it will be from 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time is when it starts. I, it doesn't say when it will end. I'm assuming it's going to be several layers. It says sign in, uh, join for coffee and network fellow attendees. Uh, the registration deadline for that event is November the 27th. And you can register at the uh, Kentucky Department of Local Government website. That's the Kentucky Department for Local Government website. Uh, they had a brief meeting, uh, I think, last October to uh, kind of kick this thing off. So, anybody that's interested in attending that, I invite you to go uh, to that web page and read about it. And uh, Judge Asher cannot attend. He just shared that with me. He mentioned that Ronnie Miller might be going. Is that correct, Marty? Or um, I. I I don't really know, but I know I would like to go, and I think the mayor is going to go. Kelly said she'd like to go, and I think some of the members of Stay and Clay are going to go. Yeah, that's besides us. Four or five, but I know of it's plan on going in. in uh, I will, uh, as many as I can haul out, they can go with me. I will uh, do a blast on her. Uh, to our chamber members and just instruct them that if they're interested in going, just contact uh, Mamie here and she can uh, let them know who, how many is planning on attending if they need to ride over with somebody. I was going to say, we need to uh, get a list of carpool. Mm -hmm. you know, right. That, that would be better. Yeah, that's what we'll do. So, so, so I'll, uh, I will make, I will officially make Mamie the contact person for that. Is that okay, Mayor? If they're going to go, let Mamie know, and we'll try to get everybody together and carpool as much as we can. So. What time is it in the day? Is it? it starts at 8:30. Yeah, 8:30 in the morning. Doesn't give an end time. It says join them for coffee, so I'm assuming that is in the morning. Okay. What is that? Because what day is it? The Yeah, December the ninth. <laughs> just want to touch on something else. I uh, did uh, send this to Irene. She did a blast to uh, chamber members as well in regard to the Affordable Care Act. Uh, we have approximately, well, I think exactly, we have 3,036 uninsured residents in Clay County. And uh, January 1, 1,183 of those uninsured individuals will qualify for subsidized health insurance. And 1,663 will uh, become eligible for Medicaid. And uh, we have changed the way that uh, we calculate eligibility for Medicaid under the Affordable Care Act. The other criteria that we have now is modified adjusted gross income. Basically, if you file a tax return, whatever you, income you reported on that tax return is what determines your eligibility for Medicaid. And uh, those, uh, uh, actually, they're, we went, uh, expanded it from 133% of uh, poverty level to 138%. I'm going to give you some figures here. You might have family members, some of you might have employees or whatever that actually qualify for Medicaid. Under this. 
I have found that uh, a lot of these that are eligible under the expanded guidelines are in fact for working poor individuals, those that are working part time, they're working multiple jobs, uh, they're working for minimum wage, uh, they're seasonal employees, those type of employees. So we tend to attach a stigma to the Medicaid program, but I want you to understand that this has kind of changed with the new Affordable Care Act guidelines. If there's one in your household, you can make uh, up to $15,856 and be eligible for Medicaid. Uh, with our wages in uh, Clay County, uh, that is living wages for a lot of people. But if you make less than $15,856, you can uh, uh, qualify for uh, Medicaid. If there's two in your household, uh, you can make up to $21,404. If there's three, $26,951. If there's four, $32,499. If there's five, $38,047. If there's six in your household, uh, you can make up to $43,595. If there is seven, forty-nine thousand one hundred forty-two, and if there is eight in your household, you can make up to fifty-four thousand six hundred ninety dollars per year and still be uh, eligible for Medicaid under the expanded guidelines. The uh, uh, others that will be eligible for subsidy begin uh, for incomes above that, and they are graduated as well. Uh, I will say this, those that are close to that Medicaid uh, eligibility guideline but are above that still can get uh, health insurance subsidized to the point that there is no premium. Now the higher you go in income, the less the subsidy is and uh, until it disappears and that is also, it would disappear at a family of four at $94,200. Now, that's the good parts of it. The bad parts of it, those who do not qualify for uh, Medicaid or for uh, subsidized health insurance are likely to want to see their premiums increased dramatically. So, so what you're hearing on uh, the news, actually both of them is true. There's good parts and bad parts. You just have one political party focusing on the good aspects. You have another political party focusing on the bad aspects of it. Uh, by my calculations, and once we enroll these uh, people in Medicaid, 55% of the population of Clay County will be enrolled in Medicaid. And uh, that is uh, it was startling to me to realize that uh, we had that much of our population that was enrolled in Medicaid. That just speaks to our lack of jobs uh, and the availability of uh, uh, job prospects here in Eastern Kentucky. Uh, if you want just another figure here, and I'll not take all your time. Uh, the total Medicaid uh, expenditures in Clay County, we had 4,506 children, 5,814 adults, or 10,320 that were enrolled. Uh, cost of their care, we had was 10,760,000 for the children, 46,205,000 for the adults. And uh, for the total, looks like uh, Medicaid paid fifty-six million nine hundred sixty-six dollars uh, in Clay County. Out of that, it looks like a hundred uh, physicians, approximately uh, about thirty-five million was paid to physicians. And like I say, we're going to increase that by about sixteen hundred more. That's about four thousand dollars per uh, member annual basis and uh, I encourage you to find these individuals that are low income and uh, get those people enrolled in Medicaid uh, regardless of whether how you feel about the Affordable Care Act it's available to us I don't know of any other employers out there who want to come to Clay County and provide health insurance for 1600 people so let's enroll thank you Okay. Uh, Marty, do you have anything on the tourism? Well, um, I, I, I have a little bit of, of news about Stay and Clay. Um, the, we had our first production of our, our, our theater, uh, Monkey Dumplings, and it was, it was uh, 
we, we were pleased. It, it turned out way better than we thought it would, and uh, we're looking forward to the next production, which will be in spring. And uh, we'll probably, it's like when people found out really what it was like, um, now they want to share their stories, which was what we were hoping. So, you know, we'll have more stories and, you know, we'll have more uh, storytelling sessions where we'll harvest the stories and decide which ones that we put on as plays. And uh, we do have another mural started. Of course, the weather is is a problem. I mean, you know, you, you can only paint if it's like past 50 degrees, but hopefully they'll be able to at least work on it some. And another thing I want to say is uh, the city is having their the parade and the Christmas bazaar December 7th, that's Saturday. And if the chamber wants to do anything, participate somehow, um, we, we should probably try to decide, you know, what to do if we do anything. I mean, some, something to think about. Yeah, that's something we need to What's the theme for the Christmas uh, Old time Christmas. Old time Christmas. We, we have called all the churches and asked them to make floats to enter. Uh, we're going to try to have a whole lot of floats instead of just horses and four wheelers and car trucks. Yeah, we are. And we've got some people that have responded and said they would build one. Uh, <coughs> chamber might want to do a float. Stay and Clay's going to do a float. Of course, you got to have hard work and volunteers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the break of the day or night working. I think it starts at 11 o'clock Saturday back. morning. Is Zara going to be here at City Hall? Yes. It starts at 1. And uh, pre lighting will be at the dark, edge, at the edge of dark, whatever time that might be. Sometimes it's earlier than other times, according to the weather. What about the freezer units? We're, we're thinking about doing something. we got to talk it over at our meeting tomorrow night. That is something that we're going to talk about is decorating it with lights and maybe a big sign that says Merry Christmas. be a great photo op to stand on the East Manchester Bridge and take pictures. Swing to down on Swing Bridge. Yeah, what could they do? Well, all, all you chamber board, board members be thinking about what what we should do uh, along that line. So, it's uh, just, you know, news to us and we we'll have to do some planning real quick to we'll be able to do anything. Uh, anybody got anything else? Any announcements or anything? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Brochures at the last meeting we talked about doing a state county brochure. This is what we came up with if everybody's okay with the look and content. Um uh, said they were printed a thousand for us. And these are just on regular office paper, but they can be printed on heavy bound glossy paper. Yeah, that ADKU is probably like you said, it's printed up and said a thousand of those so we improved that. Design. Thank you. Fantastic. I looked at it, it looks really, really nice. nice to me. I think it's something we just need to go ahead and go ahead and, and make the decision. How do you you that sounds like a thousand dollars? What do you think, Mayor? Sounds good to me. Yeah, it just looks good. That look good to you, Joe? Yes, sir. All right. That's, that's what we got to do. Yes, ma'am. I've just got a quick announcement. Um, for anybody that's, that didn't get to attend our cabinet sale, our showroom is open at um, Boom Forest. So everybody is welcome to come up. And um, you can come to the front office at Phillips Diversified and just ask for me or Ronald, and we'll be glad to take you to the back and show you our new showroom. It's got six kitchens in it, um, full-size kitchens, all the different countertops that we offer, and there's some home decor and stuff we have for sale. But, you know, if you just want to come up and take a tour and look around, we'd love to have you and you know, show you around. Now, could you do a group, like a church group or something? Absolutely. Do a you church know, group. That would be nice for yeah. business. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Church group individual. We're open Monday through Friday, eight to four, four thirty, but probably eight to four would be a good time. Everybody's welcome. Mm-hmm.